Hey everyone, my name is Katie. Welcome back to my channel. So I've been kind of scratching my brain for video ideas that I wanted to do now that we are pretty much home all the time and I have lots of extra time to film videos. And so I figured for today, I would talk about some tips and tricks for writing Goodreads reviews because I think we all here in the community use Goodreads or just reviews in general in one way or another, whether we are reviewing a book on our channel or on a blog or anything like that. And Goodreads is pretty much like the most popular book reviewing place for most people, even though you can review books on Amazon. I like, I consider Goodreads like the biggest book reviewing platform that doesn't really have a lot of competition, especially because Amazon owns Goodreads. So I think it's something that a lot of us in the community use and I have kind of just like learned as I went along. So why not make a video sharing what I have learned with you all. So before we begin, just a little disclaimer, like I don't claim to actually know everything when it comes to writing reviews. I actually don't think I'm like even that good at it, um, but you know, I try, <laughs> I get an A for effort. And I just wanted to share kind of like what I've learned being around here and trying to be consistently writing Goodreads reviews for the last year and a half. Basically, I've been using Goodreads for like a long time. I've had the app for a long time, but I never actually wrote full on reviews until I joined the booktube community and saw what other people were doing when it comes to writing those reviews. So, you know, once I was in the community and started writing reviews and I started filming wrap ups and stuff like that, I wanted some place that I could reference for my own thoughts on a book and writing reviews was kind of the best way to do this. Honestly Goodreads is just great because it's a really great place to keep track of all the books that you've read. I know I myself and I feel like most fellow readers will feel this way that I just like want to have some place to sort of keep a record of what I've read and Goodreads offers this as well as like your ability to keep track of the books that you read like as you read them update with your thoughts and also just the ability to connect with your fellow readers see what your friends are reading and build a community of readers in a on a platform that's different than twitter or youtube because it is a platform solely for books and reading and i always go to goodreads when i'm looking for information on books that are coming out or books that i'm interested in reading what's also interesting is you may not know what your review influences someone else to do. Someone might see your review and decide to pick up a book that they were unsure about or maybe decide to read a book that decide not to read a book based on bad reviews. I know I myself personally can tend to peruse the Goodreads reviews before picking up a book. So you just never know how your review may influence someone else's decision whether to pick up a book or not and especially if it's a book that you love, giving it a good review can help the book in the long run help the author and if it's something that you love and you want to support it can only bring about good things and if it's a book that you didn't like well then you can get your opinion out there and others can decide for themselves how they want to feel about the book i never think of myself as a critical reader but i do think that writing reviews helps me to develop my critical reading skills just because i know what to look for Another reason to use Goodreads is it does help to build your bookish social media profile and the more that you review books and more consistently you review books, publishers will notice this and it can help you when you want to start reaching out to publishers to get ARCs and whatnot. Okay, so let's move on to the tips for the actual reviewing part. So I feel like the first thing to keep in mind is what you should be looking for while you are reading the book. So when I first joined booktube, I didn't annotate my books, but I did have this little notebook that I would keep with just notes of what I was thinking as I was going throughout the book. Some people like to write notes just on their phone or maybe on a computer or something like that just writing down my thoughts as I go, my reactions and whatnot. Obviously this is not mandatory for writing a review at all. You just kind of find your own thing as you go along and write reviews. And then I started annotating books and I did find that that helped me a lot in learning what to look for when reviewing a book and also helping me process my emotions based on what I was reading. And I still don't always annotate books or take notes on them and still find that I can review books just fine. It just really depends it, and you can find your own personal preference for how you best feel like 
analyzing a piece of literature that you are reading but you can try out a few different strategies and i have a meaning to make an annotation video for like ever now and i haven't so if you guys are interested in seeing a guide from me on how i annotate just let me know and i would be happy to make that video so besides from actually taking notes there are a few things just to kind of try to start to notice as you are reading to better things that you would maybe reflect on when you write your review. So for me, I tend to rate and review based a lot on how the book makes me feel and being critical in the lens of my emotional response to the book instead of maybe critical through a lens of just pure literary criticism. And there are totally different styles of reviewing and it does make one review style better than the other. Like for me, if I have a really strong emotional connection to a book, I have no problem giving it five stars even if I notice some sort of flaw in a major literary device like a plot hole or something like that. Like if I just enjoyed it enough that I loved it enough, I will still give that book five stars even if, you know, maybe someone that approaches the reviews from more of just a literary at analysis angle would maybe dock a star even though they loved it would give it a star off because of this flaw that this book has. So when I'm reading a book I do just tend to look for the moments that give me some sort of emotional response, things that resonate with me because that is what I will tend to reflect on in my review. The other thing that I always try to look for is quotes that I adore because I do like to start off my review with a quote. So when I'm reading, if I come across something that just really strikes me in some way, whether it's a beautiful piece of writing, an important statement, or just something that makes me feel emotional, I will make sure to somehow, you know, like mark that quote so I can come back to it in my review because some, when I don't do that and I try and find a quote after the fact, it's just hard to try and flip through a book and be like what quote should i use for my review because i have done that before and it's just it's hard just if you find something that you like in a book or a quote that you want to use in your review just mark it as you read it i promise it will make your life easier in the long run there are certain elements that i like to pay attention to and in how they are executed when reading a book and those things that you can look for are writing style is the author more lyrical or more straightforward? What kind of age range does the writing style suit? Is there any sort of weird thing with the writing style that makes the story unique, such as the strike throughs in Chatter Me or the footnotes in Nevernight? Um, do you find the writing style lackluster or does the writing style do anything to elevate the story? Something like that. Sometimes the writing style is just ordinary and there's not too much to comment on with that but the writing style does affect how you read the book because it is the overall style of the writing. A good example of writing style would be Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. Lainey Taylor has a very very lyrical writing style in that book and I do find that that really made the story for me and it would definitely not have been a story that I loved as much if it didn't have this beautiful writing style. I really think the style played into the story because it just very much is in line with Laszlo's character and the way that the story is told and if it was told with just a run-of-the-mill boring straightforward writing style I don't think the story would have been as entertaining and I don't think I would have loved it as much. The next thing to pay attention to is the characterization and this can just basically be how you feel about a character whether you think that the author did a good job in portraying a fully fleshed out character or whether they felt a little bit flat, whether you feel like their actions created a cohesive person throughout the whole story or whether there is some sort of disconnect. If you really, really loved a character or you really hated a character but you hated them because the author wanted you to hate them and they did a good job of making you hate them or you hated them because they were poorly written. Those are the kinds of things to keep in mind for character traits. I also like in my reviews when talking about characters to point out things that I really admired about them, such as how I loved how Jude was written in The Cruel Prince because she is written as someone that is power hungry and not afraid 
to do what she wants to get the power that she thinks that she deserves and to me that was really different than a lot of other YA stories and that stuck to me so that is something positive that I wrote about the characterization in my review for The Cruel Prince. So the next element to pay attention to is the plot and the pacing. Are there any glaring plot holes? Is the pace really really slow? Do you think the plot is overall well structured whereas in there's not any lags or do you feel like the plot is kind of all over the place to jumping back and forth in between? Those are some certain things that you can point out when talking about plot in your review. For me personally I don't mind if books start out slow but that is a common complaint that some people have is that they need to be immediately drawn into a story. My personal preference is if it starts out slow it's okay as long as it picks up a little bit but for example of and that's just like again personal preferences and styles and of course everyone's reviews and everyone's feelings about books are going to be different because we all have different thoughts and feelings and different life experiences. So if we want to talk about a book that would maybe have a review where you talk about that the plot is really really slow in the beginning but can kind of picks up pace and comes to a satisfying conclusion we could maybe reflect on the priori of the orange tree i do think that the that it did take a while to pick up but it led to a really satisfying conclusion however if we want to talk about a book where it was just fast paced the entire time and was just like a wild you know ride from beginning to end we could talk about the illuminate files by amy kaufman and jay kristoff because that book literally starts out with the planet being invaded and it doesn't stop from there on out and literally my heart was racing the whole time and these books have different experiences when reading them and those are things that you can reflect upon in your review you know i'm filming this and i'm like saying to myself that i'm not a critical reader but i feel like i'm actually like getting good at being critical i'm picking up on different things so maybe I, maybe i am a critical reader but i'm not a critical rater because I'm not very harsh in my ratings but we'll get to that later on in the video. So a topic that is becoming increasingly important in the book reviewing community and especially the YA community here on booktube is the representation accuracies and diversity in the books that we are reading and I think it is worth it to point out when a book has good representation or maybe representation that is done poorly and it's not a bad thing to point out a lack of diversity in a book if you feel like it should be pointed out. We as reviewers definitely have a voice in pushing the book market and if we want more representation we can push for that in our reviews by saying that books are not diverse enough or the representation was just not good. Um, for example, there is a book by Mackenzie Lee. Goodreads is not cooperating with me so I cannot find the name of this book but there was a book by Mackenzie Lee which and I'm talking about some controversy here and I'm really not well versed on the exact details. It happened a while ago so I don't remember but it was a book about the tulip trade in the 1600s. However, one of the characters was purposely misgendered in the description of the book, the blurb that appeared on Goodreads. So I guess as to not give away the, the twist that the character was trans and people in the book community took issue with that and our voices actually had an impact because I'm pretty sure that that, you know, was taken back to the publisher and they either pushed back the publication date or changed it. I'm not 100% sure on the outcome of that, but I do know that some sort of action was taken because of the voices of reviewers that were we can also lend a hand to diverse books by reading them and giving them reviews. Even if you read a diverse book and you don't love it, still giving attention to that book, showing that you've read it and giving it a review on Goodreads will still, you know, do something positive to show that that book is gaining some sort of traction in the community, as well as just trying to read diverse authors with diverse representation in their books as well. You are, you are using your voice and influence for power to help those books gain traction when you are choosing to review them and read them. And of course, if representation is well done, it, you can always point that out in your reviews and I'm sure that others will appreciate the, you know, little notice that there is representation for XYZ in this book and that it's well done because people might be looking for that sort of representation and to see in their reviews that it's well done will make them go into the book not fearing that 
the representation is going to be poorly handled. You can also, if you feel comfortable, talk about trigger warnings if you feel like it is something that you want others to know about the book. Say you go into a book and you had no idea that it had this trigger in it and you want to make sure that your other readers are well informed about this trigger before heading into the books because as we know, publishers are not good about putting trigger warnings in the books and it is the power of the reviewers that really can help people find these triggers and so that they know to either avoid a book or to just use caution before heading into it. And I want to give a shout out to my friend Melanie from Mel to the Any because as you know, she is super popular on Goodreads and she always, always, always makes sure to the best of her ability to include tons of trigger warnings for books. And I think that she is using her power for good. <laughs> Okay, so the next thing that I like to look for when reading a book is the world building. Is there a world that is being built? If it is a fantasy book, is there a magic system? Does the magic system make sense? How is the world building too confusing or does it make sense in the end? It doesn't have to make sense right away, but if it comes together in the end so that you can make sense of it, that is something to keep an eye out for and I will give a good example of this and a bad example of this. I'll start out with a bad example and sorry if you like this book, but to me personally, I found that the magic system in The Gilded Wolves didn't make sense to me and so I reflected upon that in my review, giving my reasons why. Someone else might have liked the magic system and gave their reasons why they liked it in their review and that is totally fine. That is personal opinion. That is our own experiences when reading said book and her own tastes. But you know, that, that was a major part of my review because that was a major drawback of the book for me. A book that has a lot of world building and really cool magic system is A Darker Shade of Magic trilogy by V.E. Schwab. I just really adored the magic system in that and the world building. It was very unique, but explained in such a way that it made a lot of sense. And I really thoroughly enjoyed that. And I don't actually think I reviewed those books on Goodreads because I read them before I was even on booktube, but when I eventually do a reread of them, I will make sure to touch upon that in my review because it is one of my favorite things about that series. So I'm a big softie and something that I always like to reflect upon in my reviews is the romance. So I like to look for the romance in the book and if there is chemistry between the characters, that is huge. If I'm like, what are these interactions? I don't know. If you are someone that is bothered by insta-love, you could be looking for that insta-love and when if you think like it's not authentic enough, you can be like, this is too insta-lovey for me and you can talk about that in your review. Uh, yeah, I just really like to look for the interactions between the love interests to see, you know, if, if, they, if they click, if they work together, if it makes me feel things. <laughs> Another thing to think about when writing a review uh, is something that is like, unique to the book. If there is something that you think the book does well that no one else has done, you can totally bring attention to that in your review. So an example of a book where I really really thought that the romance was a very strong aspect of the plot is The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller. I just thought that the characters had such great banter between them and it was such a great slow burn and a great build up to the climax of their romance and I definitely talked about that in my review. I think that covers pretty much the basics of the different things that you can look out for but of course if there is anything more specific you can always mention it in your review anything that stands out to you in particular about a book is always worth mentioning. Okay, so now we can get to how I actually structure my reviews. So I have noticed that this style is pretty popular on Goodreads and I am not the person to come up with this. This is just something that I've seen around, but it is a style that I like because I find that it is pretty easy to follow structurally. So I always like to start off with a quote from the book if I can. And again, that's why when I'm reading, I like to tab quotes. That way I know what quote I want to start off my review with. This is just to grab someone's attention when they are looking at the different reviews and to also maybe give a feel for the kind of writing in the book, even in just that short snippet. From there, I do like to give a summary most of the time. And I will usually make this pretty obvious by saying, summary. So when saying the summary, usually I like to just go off of the blurb of the book and then just rewrite it in my own words. And I also do this when filming wrap ups as well, just because I don't want to accidentally give away any information that once you've read the book seems obvious, but wasn't actually revealed to the reader in the synopsis. So that is just something to keep in mind because you don't want to accidentally spoil. 
from there i actually find this is kind of like a new thing that i've done so then i will go on to review and i will say review and from there i follow the structure where i will literally like write boom 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 and then write the paragraphs as i go so what these boom 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 things are will make more sense but i tend to separate it by paragraph based on what i'm talking about and I, these basic things that i touched on before are kind of the way that i will lay out my reviews so i always like to start with my general thoughts first any sort of emotional response if i am going to be like wow i really love this book or wow like this book sucked i will state it right in the beginning of my review and then from there i'll write a paragraph about the world building the plot the main characters and also throw in some side characters there general characterization if i find i have a lot to say about the characters i may separate it one paragraph for the main characters one paragraph for the side characters clump them together if there's not a lot to say if there's a lot to say i don't know you can give each character their own paragraph doesn't matter as well as any sort of like relationships that are excluding the main romance then i will usually write about the romance or if it's not like a romance centered book maybe like the main relationships that played a role in the book then i will either go on to mention something unique about the book or my favorite moments in the book something that really stood out to me about the book and if there isn't anything to write there then i will skip that part and then i just go on to a conclusion which is either like oh i thought this was a really strong wrap up to the series, I will not be continuing with this series, I cannot wait for the next book, I will give up my firstborn child for the next book, that type of thing kind of end on a strong note. And so generally like if I write an outline of just like what I'm going to write about in each paragraph before I start to write it, that just helps me mentally because I am very much like an outline type of gal. So when I go have that going into the review to write, it just makes it a lot easier for me. The next thing to touch upon is that Goodreads has a five star system where you can rate a book from one to five stars and some people will give half stars. I do give half stars if I find that I can't make up my mind between like where a book will be and if I find that it's between a four and a five star, I will give it a 4.5 star. Although I do find that I have trouble when I give it a half star what to actually give it on Goodreads because you can only do full star ratings and Goodreads has said that they will never actually make half star ratings a thing. I don't know so yeah i just kind of like do what i feel in the moment if you guys want to chime in in the comments of how you feel about the half star and how if you either tend to round up or round down for the half star rating it is kind of like a tricky slash controversial point but it it just it'd be like that sometimes you know everyone tends to have their own personal star rating system a five star to someone might be a different thing to you. For me, if I have that emotional connection with the book, I'm probably going to give it five stars. Um, to me, four stars was that I liked it pretty good. A three star to me is like very, very meh. A two star is like, I probably really didn't like it. And a one star is like, this book is absolute trash. Like maybe we should set it on fire. Uh, to other people, like they may be not as lenient in their ratings. Like I tend to rate books higher like i usually read books four or five stars to be honest maybe that's my own bias because i tend to only read the books that i think i will like but i don't know some people are really stingy with giving out five stars some people give them out left and right it's like it doesn't matter to anyone but you because it is your review and you can do with it what you want and you can rate books how you want to rate them and you don't have to explain it to anyone if you don't want to but some people will in their goodreads bio like say what each star rating means to them so just as you review books over time you can develop your own personal system based on what you feel like doing so some general tips and tricks try writing your review as soon as you are finished reading a book do i do this no do i need to get better at doing this absolutely because i find the longer i wait between when i finish a book and those emotions are so strong and actually sitting down to write the review it just gets harder and harder the longer that i wait so i try to write a review when it's fresh because everything is just fresh in my mind and especially if i didn't annotate a book or didn't take notes on it then like the longer i wait the more it's just gonna like melt out of my brain another thing is just to practice like i made it a challenge to myself to review every book that i read in 2019 and i think i did for almost all of them almost all of them i don't think i did every single one but almost all of them and it's just practicing over time that you'll get better like you don't have to be good at reviewing right away you can just write down your thoughts and feelings and be on your merry old way it is really just what you want to make it but again the more that you practice and the more that you write reviews the more you'll be able to look for these critical elements and the more that you'll be able to pick up on them in other books that you read another thing is if you are reviewing an arc for a publisher 
then you probably feel more obligated to write a review and thus it will pressure you into writing a review. So when I am reading an ARC for a publisher, I will make sure that I review it and I try to review it either right before it comes out or like around the time that it comes out because you are given this book by a publisher and they are expecting some sort of review from you in exchange for this free book that they gave you. So to me, that kind of puts the pressure on it. So it's like a school assignment, like I can't like forget to do my homework. I also find a major, major motivator for me writing Goodreads reviews is that it helps me so, so much when I am filming wrap ups because if I don't write Goodreads reviews and I don't write notes, I will come to be like, it'll come to me wrap up time and I'll be like, I read this book almost a month ago. I don't remember the details of things that made me feel the way that they did, just the like general emotional response that I had. So the more detailed your reviews are and the fresher the book is in your mind when you write it, then you can perhaps give a more detailed wrap up. Using formatting such as bolding, italics, using pictures, linking to different things can help make your review more aesthetically pleasing and grab the eye. You can just have a lot of fun with it. There are the formatting tips that are up on the upper right corner of the thing because you do have to write an HTML code for doing those certain things. If you are having trouble with it, there are some websites I believe where you can just do what you want and then it will give you the code. Um, I will have to look into what those are and hopefully I will have that linked in the description box below because I haven't personally used them but I do know that they exist. I also think it's a really good idea to use shelves to organize your Goodreads page. That way if someone is going to your profile they can easily find, oh this is this person's favorite books and these are the mangas that they read and these are the audiobooks that they listen to, stuff like that. And for your own personal organization, it just helps with making your Goodreads a whole thing, I guess. I need to get better at using my Goodreads shelves. I'm kind of bad at it, but to me, I find if I shelve the book right when I review it, it's a lot easier than going back and trying to shelve things after the fact. And just in general, getting more engagement on your reviews, it's good to post them other places. So if you have a book Twitter, you can link your review to your book Twitter and then it it will go up on there once your review is up and people will see it, click on it, see your review. Um, you can also just try and make a lot of friends on Goodreads and join in Goodreads communities, comment on other people's reviews and just engage in the community that way and you will start to see more engagement on your posts. So yeah, I just think that Goodreads is a really, really good resource for us readers and I think that we can all develop our own unique reviewing style that reflects on our own personal experiences and you can make of it what you want. If you don't want to write Goodreads reviews, like you don't have to at all, but if you do, I have laid out some tips and tricks that will hopefully help you. And again, this is all based on my own personal experience. You could do something completely different and if it works for you, like go right ahead. Um, yeah, I just wanted to kind of speak on what I've learned in the past like year and a half that I've been seriously reviewing books and just to kind of, you know, talk about a lovely app that we have available to us in the book community. So with that being said, please leave your thoughts and comments on my video below. This is a little bit different for me, so I do want to hear what you guys thought of it. I will leave my Goodreads linked in the description as always if you are curious about the reviews that I have done. So yeah, I would really, really love to hear from you guys with your thoughts. And until the next time, have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.